for dear students for today we will see what are the uh, basics of a color or a color basics used in a color television so here a topic will be a color basics used in a color television so here first we will go to see what do we mean by dispersion of light so here we can we know that whenever a white light is passed through a prism then it will be a dispersed into seven colors as shown in the figure here so here you can see you are having white light so this white light is incident on a prism so here you are having incident of white light on prism and here because of refraction and different wavelengths you have seven colors which are coming out okay so here you can see the first color is red here the first color is red this is orange this is yellow this is green this is blue this is indigo and this is violet so this is a spectrum of a, a rainbow like spectrum of a colors which you can see that white light is made up of seven colors and this concept is called as dispersion of light this is called as dispersion of light okay that is white light can be made into seven colors or white light is made up of seven colors this can show that similarly inverse of this is also possible when you incident seven colors in the same fashion with the same angle you can get output as a white light okay so that can be called as recombination of color okay so first we will see a dispersion what is light dispersion when white light is passed through a glass prism it splits into its spectrum of colors in order violet indigo blue green yellow orange and red and this process of white light splitting okay into its constituent colors is termed as dispersion so it is simple that whenever a white light passes through a prism it will be dispersed into seven colors or depending upon the colors their wavelengths the material okay and the angle of incident then we come to see a, a concept what do you mean by recombination of light as i have told you if the same process of dispersion is made reverse when seven colors are incident on a inverted prism then you can get a white light as output okay so that can be called as recombination of light and here we can see that initially we are showing you dispersion so here you can see white light is entering okay and here you can see dispersion dispersion of light okay and same dispersed light these lights when they are incident on another prism here you can see recombination here you can see recombination and output again here will be white light white light okay so the same our concept what we have done in a dispersion in a reverse manner will give you a recombination when all the seven colors are again incident on an inverted prism then you will get the output as a white light okay now this, but this our concept was with regard to what is dispersion of light and recombination of light and what a uh, white light is made up of seven colors okay then we will go to see what do you mean by primary colors now our primary colors are those colors which cannot be formed by mixing any other color they are they have their own identity they have their own hue they have their own identity of color they cannot be made or they cannot be produced by mixing any two or three colors so these are colors which are original and which cannot be uh, obtained by mixing of other colors are called as primary colors okay so here if you see the definition what are a primary colors colors which cannot be produced by mixing other colors are called as primary colors this is a simple definition it is not possible to produce either red blue or green colors by mixing two other colors that means for our a color tv we are going to use red blue and green rbg as the primary colors so these are the basic colors and these colors are independent of themselves 
they cannot be produced by mixing any other two colors so they are uh, having their own identity and any other color can be produced by mixing these colors okay so for this reason red green and blue are called as primary colors so here if you see mixing of uh, three primary colors so here you can see you are having blue red and green so on top we have shown here blue and then we have shown a green and then we have shown here red okay so here you can see here is your blue 11 percent blue has been shown here and then 59 percent green has been shown here and then 30 percent red has been shown here now these three are your primary colors okay when you mix this the primary colors you will get white color as it is shown here okay so here you are seeing that you are getting a white color so if you mix 59% of green, 11% of blue and 30% of red color, you will get a brightness level high and it is a white color what you will get. Okay. Similarly, if you see the mixture of green and blue, you will get a color called as cyan color. If you see a mixture of green and red, you will get a color which is yellow. If you see a mixture of blue and red, you will get a color called as magenta. Okay, now these three colors, that is cyan, yellow and magenta, which are obtained by mixing two of the primary colors. Okay, these three colors are called as secondary colors. Okay, and when you mix this uh, primary colors, blue, green and red, you will get white. But when you mix two, two colors like blue and green, you will get cyan. When you mix green and red, you will get yellow. When you mix red and blue, you will get magenta. Okay. So here, the next a concept will be by mixing of these two our primary colors, we are getting our colors which are yellow, magenta, and cyan. Then what are these colors? These colors are secondary colors. Then if there is a question, what are secondary colors? Then you can tell a secondary color can be produced by mixing other colors. So here specifically two of the primary colors. Okay. Thus yellow color can be produced by mixing red and green color magenta color can be produced by mixing red and blue color cyan color can be produced by mixing blue and green color so here if you see blue red and green are the primary colors by mixing them by mixing two two of them we are getting one each color like yellow magenta and cyan and these colors yellow magenta and cyan are called as secondary colors because they are obtained by mixing two of the primary colors then again here uh, a colored or diagram you can see same thing has been shown here whenever you have red color here and then you have green color here green is shown here and then you have blue green is shown here and then you have blue here okay so when red green and blue are mixed you get a white color here okay so here you can show a white color okay now similarly when you mix red and green you get yellow color here when you mix green and blue you will get cyan color here when you mix blue and red you will get magenta color here okay so where yellow cyan and magenta are called as secondary colors red green and blue are called as primary colors okay then what do we mean by complementary colors now there is another a combination okay where we say complementary colors are the two colors which give white light when they are mixed together when they are mixed together they will get white light they will give white light for example red and cyan are complementary colors because they produce white light on mixing together if you mix red and cyan you will get white light similarly if you mix blue and yellow okay and green and magenta that they are also you are going to get uh, your white light and therefore those colors are also called as complementary colors okay so here red and cyan if you mix so here as it is shown red and cyan so here red and cyan if you mix you will get white color so red and cyan are called as complementary colors similarly if you mix blue and yellow you will get white color and therefore blue and yellow will be called as complementary colors then similarly green and magenta if you mix you will get white color therefore green and magenta will be complementary colors okay 
So complementary colors are the two colors which give white light when mixed together. Okay. Then again here we have shown a figure where uh, again you can show what are primary colors, what are secondary colors and what are complementary colors. Okay. So here if you see this red is primary, this is primary and green is primary. Okay. And blue is primary. Okay. When you mix blue and red, when you mix blue and red, you will get magenta as secondary. When you mix red and green, okay, when you mix red and green, so here you will get yellow as secondary. And when you mix green and blue here, you will get cyan color as secondary. So these are your secondary and primary. Similarly, you can see white color we have shown in between. So in this direction, if you see complementary colors also you can get. If cyan and red, cyan and red are mixed, you will get white color. Similarly, yellow and blue are mixed, you will get white color. Similarly, green and magenta is mixed, you will get white color. So these are complementary colors. So everything you can show from this figure, what are primary colors, what are secondary colors and what are complementary colors. Okay. Then same figure, again we have shown with the red beam, light blue beam and green beam which you, which can help you to know how the transmission in TV can go with. So again same figure here, red beam will produce your red color and green beam will produce a green color and blue beam will produce a blue color. Okay, And if you mix red and green you will get yellow here. If you mix uh, green and blue you will get cyan here. If you mix uh, your red and blue you will get magenta here. Okay, and when you mix all the three primary colors, you will get a white color here. Okay, in a proper proportion. Okay, so that white color will tell you about the brightness level, but that, that we'll see afterwards. But at present, we should know what do we mean by primary colors, secondary colors, and complementary colors. Then we'll go to see what is mixing of colors because mixing of colors will give you to produce many other colors. So in mixing also there are two types, one is called as subtractive mixing and one is called as additive mixing. For our color TV transmission we use additive mixing. Whereas for other things like painting and other things we can use subtractive mixing. Okay. So here first we will see what is subtractive mixing. In subtractive mixing reflecting properties of pigments are used which absorb all wavelengths except their characteristic color wavelengths. So here the general meaning is you are going to subtract something from white to get something. Some colors from white will be subtracted to get some other colors. That is called a subtractive mixing. For example, in case of cyan color, okay, red color is absorbed. So here you can see red color is absorbed whereas green and blue are reflected. So here red color out of the primary three red color is absorbed and blue and green okay are reflected because blue and green together will make cyan color okay similarly if you speak about magenta magenta doesn't require green color so green color will be absorbed and what will be reflected is red and blue because red and blue mixing together you will get magenta similarly for yellow color here so yellow color here blue color is not needed so blue color is absorbed whereas green and red green and red if you mix you will get a yellow color okay so this is what your subtractive mixing will be you are here what you are doing is you are going to remove or you are going to subtract something from the white color to get a particular color and that will be subtractive mixing and this technique is not used in our color television production of colors in our, our, our color TV or transmission, we are going to use additive mixing. Okay. Now, what is additive mixing? Additive mixing is when pigments of two or more colors are mixed. They reflect wavelength which are common to both. Additive mixing is the basis of color TV. In this light from two or more colors can create a different color. This is very important. When you mix two or more colors, you will get different color and that different color depends on the proportion of the mixing colors. 
Thus, a different colors are created by mixing pure colors, that is red, green, and blue, and not by subtracting parts from white color. Okay. So this is additive mixing, and this is what we are going to use in our TV color productions. Okay. From your basic primary colors, we are going to produce all other colors. Clear? So here, then next we will go to see what are attributes of color. Okay. Now, a color will have three attributes. And those three attributes are called as hue, brightness, and saturation. So first, if you speak about hue, the a color itself is called as hue. Say, for example, if you are having red color, then red color itself is the hue of that color. And it depends on the dominant wavelength of the light. By adding two or more of the primary colors, you can get many other colors, which are called as many other hues are produced. Okay. So hue means basically the color itself. Similarly, if you go to see brightness, each color produces a certain amount of brightness. Brightness of a color is determined to the amount of light energy contained in it. So how bright or how dark is the color that is depending on the light energy in it. So light energy dependent in it will give you the brightness. Then if you see what is saturation, the amount of white light in a color determines its saturation level. So how much amount of white light is present in that particular color that will give you the saturation level. Now these three are called as attributes of color which are hue, brightness and saturation. Then we'll go to see what do we mean by luminance and chrominance. So here whenever we speak about luminance, luminance will indicate the brightness. It will give the brightness of the picture. Whereas a chrominance will give the color of the color information about the picture. Okay. So luminance is brightness and chrominance is color. So if you see the first one, luminance signal, the luminance or brightness indicates how the color will look in a black and white reproduction. So the color picture, when you see it on a black and white screen, it will give you the indication of its brightness level. Uh, this is the amount of light intensity as perceived by the human eye. Different colors have different amount of luminance. In a color television, the luminance information is in the Y signal. So it is indicated by Y. The Y signal components have a 30% red color, 59% green color and 11% blue color. Therefore, luminance signal Y is given by y is equal to 0 0.30 r that is 30 percent of red plus 0 0.59 g that is 59 percent of green plus 0 0.11 blue that is 11 percent of blue the y uh, value will be one for a bright picture when the white level is more and it will be zero for a dark picture so y signal will give you the luminance signal which is indicating the brightness of the picture then if you go to see what do you mean by a chrominance signal, the hue and saturation, the two attributes of a color, not the brightness, the hue and saturation of a color are a collectively known as chrominance. A chrominance is also known as chroma and it does not contain the brightness information. It is a denoted as C signal in a color television. The C signal contains the color information. So when, whenever we go to see the block diagram of a transmitter and receiver of a, a color TV, okay, so in that case, we should know basically what do we mean by luminance, that is the Y signal, and a chrominance, that is a C signal, because Y signal will give you the brightness information and C signal will give you the color information, okay. Thank you, students.